This is our second video in our five part series overviewing data structures. In this video, we take a look at graphs. So a graph is a data structure consisting of node or vertices and pointers or edges. Although it's common referred to vertices and edges when discussing graphs, this is largely due to their application in mathematics and both sets of terms are correct. A graph differs from a linked list and binary tree because each vertex can have more than two edges and point to any vertex in the data structure. The edge can either point in one direction, a directed graph, or not specify a direction, an undirected graph. Graphs can also be weighted, with each edge given a value representing a relationship between the vertices, like distances, for example. Here's an example of how we could represent this undirected graph using Python code. And below that is the pseudocode that would be used to present the same graph in an exam. Here's an example of how we would represent this directed graph using Python syntax. As we already mentioned, it is also possible for each edge to have an edge value associated with it, sometimes referred to as its cost. Edge values are required for some algorithms using graph data structures, like Dijkstra's algorithm. In this example, the edge value between A and B is 2, the edge value between A and C is 6, and the edge value between A and D is 3. Edge values can represent many things, such as distance, a length of time that's passed, or bandwidth. It all depends on what the data structure is being used for. We typically store graphs as objects, or using a dictionary known as adjacency lists. However, we can also store graphs using an array known as an adjacency matrix, with rows and columns representing vertices and edges respectively. Here's an example of an adjacency matrix for an undirected graph. When implementing this method, rows and columns are not usually labelled with vertices, but they're shown here to aid the understanding. A one represents an edge existing between two vertices. In Python, this adjacency matrix could be declared as follows. Graphs have many uses in computer science, for example, mapping road networks for navigation systems. Storing social media network data. Resource allocation in operating systems. Representing molecular structures and geometry. It's worth noting that graphs and trees are essentially the same data structure with a binary tree simply being a special type of graph. Therefore, operations on a binary tree, such as traverse, can also be performed on graph structures. Here we can see how graph data can remain the same even though the structure is looking different. What is important is not how the graph looks or is visualized, but which vertices are connected to which others. Using only the necessary detail and discarding all the unnecessary detail is known as abstraction. So consider for a second how navigation systems store map data. They only need to know each road type and length, plus any other roads it connects to. A good example here of abstraction and graphs is the map of the London Underground. It bears no resemblance to where the stations are physically located. All that's important is which stations are connected to which lines.
there are a number of operations which can be performed on a graph data structure. We split those out here into standard operations, search operations and traverse operations. In our second set of videos, when we go into graphs in more details, we'll be looking at many of these operations and how we implement them. Having watched this video, you should be able to answer the following key question. What is a graph data structure and how can it be used? We know that getting to grips with data structures and all the algorithms associated with them is a very tricky area of the course. And so we've produced a book called Essential Algorithms for A-Level Computer Science that's available on Amazon. It covers all the data structures you need to know about, along with the algorithms you need to perform on them, and it covers all the exam boards. We overview each data structure, discussing its typical applications and the operations you can perform on it. We provide a QR code that jumps off to a useful page of additional resources. We then take each data structure and the algorithms you need to perform and present them first in simple structured English, then in a diagrammatic format, then in pseudocode, and finally we present you with fully coded algorithms which you need to cover on the data structures in both Python and VB so you can actually code them up and practice them yourselves.